Okay. Hello, everyone. It's my first one this chair, so please uh, bear with me. Um, yeah, it feels like you've done so much already. Uh -huh, I know. Okay. Um, welcome. Can I have someone call me to order for February 8th? You do that. I call. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call the meeting for February 8th, 2022 to order for the Travel Council Advisory Board. Um, first up on the agenda. Give me a second. You, you just go through the welcome conflict of interest and that stuff. Okay, so I'll do a second. Got it. Um, welcome. I already said that twice. Um, any conflicts of interest, disclosures, or supporting communication? Nope, oh, hang on, my. Um, next, citizens to be heard. So we have one or two. If you all want to go as a presentation, you can do it that way. Well, I've got John why don't we just open it up yeah where should i maybe i mean that if you come over this way the camera will find you this is the mic so if you want it you could just sit right here if you want it it will find you yeah watch that's scary so is this gonna work yeah, yeah if you just sit right here oh i sit i mean you can do whatever you want really keep it well i'll, I'll stand okay that'll work okay so
Mets Natural History Association. We're the operating partner at the Met. Uh, we partner with the county, the Forest Service, the BLM, and the National Park Service. We also get some financial support from the city uh, for the bathrooms. So I am here with more numbers, but I just wanted to start too with all of the information that is dispensed through the Moab Information Center. It's, uh, it's amazing what the work that they do there. If you look up TripAdvisor, it's just heartwarming to see all the people are so thankful that they had a place to go to ask somebody some questions. And sometimes people's uh, vacation is disrupted. They can't plan in advance. They need to know what else there is to do. And I think it's, uh, it's essential to have a centralized location for information. We don't have a Chamber of Commerce that uh, dispenses that information. What we have is the Moab Information Center. Uh, in a normal year, about 200,000 people walk in there. And uh, we're, we are often asking the county for some more money to support the MIC. It costs about $350,000 a year to run it. Um, we get about 100,000 from our partners and then we have sales in there. And we try to be sensitive to downtown businesses and not sell Moab souvenirs and that sort of thing and compete. We just need to generate some money so that we can help pay the bills. Because we pay for everything there, including paying rent to the county. So we do get money through the Travel Council every year. And this year it'll be $38,000. And we pay 27,600 back to the county in rent. Um, that money that comes to us from the Travel Council, originally when the Visitor Center started, every partner contributed personnel. They had an employee there. Well, that got very confusing, very difficult, hard to manage. So CNHA said, we'll hire all the employees and train them and take care of them. You guys pay us for somebody in lieu of sending somebody. Well, those payments haven't kept up with the cost of an employee. But what we're getting from uh, the Travel Council right now is the equivalent of about one employee. And for that, you get a tremendous amount of outreach for the community, promotion of local businesses, um, support of the public lands, all of the messages that we're constantly trying to get out there about responsible recreation, a lot of safety messages. I've been in there listening to these folks talk to somebody about Please don't take your 10 year old on a bicycle ride this afternoon, it's gonna be 105 degrees. You know, these are just things that you don't find when you pick up your phone and look for information. So anyway, I am concerned that our lease is up at the end of this year oh. and that the county may have some other ideas for how they could use that building. Um, I'm not quite sure where people are supposed to go if there isn't a MIC and I just think that we ought to think long and hard before we decide that we don't need it anymore. Every resort community has got a visitor center. I don't think we're to the point yet, we might be someday to where brick and mortar visitor centers aren't needed anymore. I don't think we're there yet. And we are very concerned about our visitors. We're concerned when we issue OHV permits, we make sure that they get all the messages about local regulations. And a lot of that happens at the MIC. So, Anyway, I just wanted to be here to let people know what's potentially happening there and to uh, help inform you about what really happens at the MIC and how that gets paid for. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Roxanne. Thank you. Isn't Archer's also putting some rangers at the MIC this Yes, that's this a season? good question. Uh, one of the things uh, this next year with timed entry that we're all crossing our fingers and hoping goes really well is that the Park Service is going to put a ranger or two at the MIC every day to help the visitors who arrive and don't have reservations. So once again, it's a centralized place. It's somewhere for people to be directed who are frustrated or don't understand the process and they can get some help there. We do all, a lot of things uh, for all of our partners out of the Moab Information Center. Awesome. Anyone else any questions? I think okay. you, I think the mix is awesome. I, I, I echo, you know, that, that it needs to stick around. Pass the statement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the thirty-eight thousand is in the budget, so that should be a no problem. But it's it's the least that. Well, one of the things that I have heard said from the county is, how can we make the mix self-sustaining so that they don't need a subsidy from the county? 
I don't consider what we get from the county a subsidy. Right. We're not, you pay for a service. Yeah. You pay for what you're going to get there. And I don't understand why the county doesn't think that there's some obligation to sure. TRT funds to pay for a visitor center. Yeah. I, and so when it comes to me that, well, how are you going to not have to come to us for this $38,000? It's like, that. It, we're not asking a whole lot. We take a loss every year. Mm -hmm. If everybody thinks that we're making money at the MIC, we're not. So CNHA usually covers all those losses. But we feel strongly enough in support of our partners that it's necessary. And we're a nonprofit. We have a mission. So not making money is OK. We just want to make sure that we're getting the message out there and supporting our partners. Awesome. And, oh, and I'll throw out, too, that we get an extra $7,000 a year from the Travel Council for keeping the restrooms open late. Yep. So just a question for, for one of the prime downtown lots. Um, could be said that it's a little bit underdeveloped. Are you also attached to the physical form of the current space? Or as long as you're providing the functions, um, is that what you're primarily concerned about? I, I'm not sure if we're really um, attached to the physical form. We're attached to the location. Yeah. I think it's important uh, to have a centralized location. But if we don't have that size, then possibly we don't have a store. We don't have an auditorium where we do do lecture series every year. Uh, a lot of locals come to those. So if we have less space, we could still dispense information. But if we have no store, then there's even more money that we can't generate on our own. Okay, but that's not what I'm talking about. Okay. There's a bunch of landscaping, oh. and, there's, and there's tremendous vertical development potential on that lot. Okay. And so all that could, the make could potentially be there. And then if there was additional commercial residential development there that could potentially eliminate the need for additional funding or just make the, the mm -hmm. budget is a concern. There's a lot of, it seems like revenue potential from that lot in addition to all the existing functions of the MIC and perhaps more. So, um, so and I'm sorry, you talked about like making it a three-story building so it's an accommodate. Well, three-story. Yeah. Three st up to three stories is allowed downtown. But potentially redeveloping the space to add value to that particular parcel, maintaining its public function, and increasing revenue generation and additional yeah. money. So it would be opposite for the I have no idea. I'm just saying that there's like you don't see really any other lot that's run by a private business that has landscaping. Develop up to the lot lines, and that's what private businesses do. And so just from a the budget is the issue. There's a lot of potential there. Maintain the existing functions, and, but but add to it. Yeah, Sharon. Um, I know when they were doing the parking lot study, um, they had actually said possibly putting a two-story parking area in that where the parking lot is. Um, one, we need the parking lot. Um, we can't be expanding back because I mean, just people coming into the into the MIC alone sometimes will fill up the parking lot. Yeah. Um, we let buses turn around in there, we let buses, you know, people, they'll drop people off and then come pick them back up. Um, as far as just personal opinion, I think the landscaping in front of the MIC is a huge benefit to the city. I don't think we should be going clear out to the road with anything there. Lots of things get, I mean, just, I mean, the minimum of watching parades, if, you, if you've ever been down there when with the the light parade or the even the homecoming parade, that Mick grounds is packed with people watching the parades. We have we let the mark do their chalk, sidewalk chuck um, art contest or whatever in there every year. That is a gathering spot for people. And I I would really hate to see development go from the front of the Mick all the way out that, and take out all that landscaping. That would be, I think that would be detrimental to the just the look of downtown, just personally. And that's not me being from the Mac, but me personally saying I I think it's a an oasis. Um, we get a lot of people that come and eat their lunch on our grass um, that are walking around town. You know, they might not even come into the Mac, but they're using the Mac grounds um, to have a little picnic with their family. The kids are running around. We think, but I had never thought about maybe going up a story or two. 
area and that having is. the mech on the bottom floor. I, I know where this concern came from. Okay. Is uh, we, as we know, is we're in this small chamber that has to hold so many people and we don't have room. Grant, the uh, county needs to improve its facilities. And we'd like to do so by not going into debt, not taking out a big debt. And so we decided to study all the land we own in the county. And it would have been negligent of us not to consider the mix. We need to put that in the mix. <coughs> I can assure you it's not going to be sold. It's going to be there. Nothing's going to happen quickly, maybe 10, 15, 20 years from now. But it's not something the county is considering doing at this point. Uh, we will probably be selling some land, but it won't be a bit. We And one thing we did talk about a lot was if it just became that that was the best way to go, because it is the most valuable piece of property we own by far, we wanted to protect and maintain an, a green area downtown. And so that's I mean, it's nice to have a green area. If anything, improve it. Mm -hmm. Maybe have some benches. Maybe, you know, we talked about that. But uh, John and, and Rafa, I, I think you can take brush. I don't think you need to be spending a lot of energy and concern about at this time that the make is going to, the county is planning to sell the mix. We're going to figure out some way. We're even looking at maybe this time it would be better to take a loan out. We don't know. We are going to be either selling land or taking a loan. But at this time, we're not thinking about selling any land that's in. Is there anything that the Travel Council Board wants to do on this issue, letter of support, anything well, like I that? Think or? That we're, I think we are going to be negotiating. And it is really expensive for the county to maintain the Travel Council Vic. You know, like the new, I mean, it's expensive, you know, maintaining the building is expensive. And, but yet it is an important aspect. So we might be asking for more money for the lease, but I don't know, that's all in the mix. Nothing, nothing started that the lease is up. Maybe it'll stay the same. You know, we'll all get together and look at what we have and where we're at and what's gonna be the best for the community because we're serving the citizens. And it's, we're not we're a nonprofit as well. We don't want to make money, but we also need to stay in the black. Just like the museum costs us a lot of money. You know, a lot, you know, a lot of things you do as uh, elected officials, and that's our job. Part of our job is to provide um, for our citizens places that enhance their life and make their life more valuable. That's why we have trails, that's why we have swimming center, that's why we have so many things that are there. Costs money for the city, costs money for the county, but they're important. Our parks are important and the mix is important. And I think the area in front of the mix, I agree with you, the grass area, nice. I can see it even being improved, but Unless you want to spend your time worrying about this and going to meetings, I think I know you can just let it go. <laughs> and I'll just say um, full support of the mix. I know that I've learned more and more about chambers and, and what they do in other places. And a lot of chambers that do, they are combined with the tours and they use, they do use that TRT money for um, their information centers and to promote and kind of do what we have here separated chamber from county. Um, but, but to me, it seems like the perfect use of, of those funds. And especially if we're trying to focus on education, I mean, that's the perfect place to do it. So that seems to make sense to me. And before we totally let this go, so I don't have to spend any more time <laughs> worrying about it, that Mary is, uh, we're already losing money there. So if the rent goes up substantially in a, in a new well, lease, then we'll be looking for more money. <laughs> so, you know, we might be coming to the Travel Council and say next year, put more budget yeah. money in their budget for that. I mean, we're, you know, we'd, we'd like to pencil it out better so that it works for the county. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a weird 
you know, the money coming from the MIC and rent has to be used a certain way and the TRT money has to be used a certain way. And even if it's offsetting, it has to, I, I don't know the context, but I'm wondering maybe that's- Maybe we can talk to some of the other agencies, you know, but you know, it will be up and then there will be negotiation, but I, I don't see the county wanting to, I don't think, I don't think really there's any, in the near future, there's gonna be any changes. Yeah, sure. Is there, as far as our budgeting goes, and because TRT money is earmarked for visitor centers, yeah. is there any way we can use, you know, because I know the county and the citizens don't want us advertising so much. Can we use some of our advertising money for stuff at the MIC? I mean, like putting it into the MIC because we are giving out the messaging. Um, you and I talked about putting those videos up on the TV in the MIC. Um, is that a way we could get more, uh, yeah. our, you know, more money into the MIC? I mean, I see the MIC as a place where responsible recreation messaging is going to happen 100%. Mm -hmm. I mean, it already is. Right. So I, I see that as a, you know, if right now we're basically paying operation costs with that $38,000, uh, I think there's definitely could be a conversation, especially as you know, we're forecasting TRT to grow next year and go. Essentially TRCC also, right? Can it be TRCC? I don't know what TRCC means. I think it has more uses than TRT. Convention, I thought convention <clears throat> center, I don't know if that includes. Anyway, something to look at. Yeah. <laughs> and then visitor centers are used uh, with convention centers in terms of the uh, top percentage of money that's being used. For cool. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much yeah. for the yeah. time. I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for bringing me on <laughs> Oh, I think you're You're more than welcome to stick around if you'd like, but we won't blame you for <laughs> not either. Okay. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Tom. Nice to meet you. Been Kathy Cooney for years, and now she's retired. But I walked out and found her. Jenny? Well, I guess Jason ran to the bathroom, so maybe we waited. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Roxanne. Um, so it seems that uh, at least a member of the body is using the bathroom. Jason has run to the bathroom, so I think we'll wait just a second <laughs> for him to return. Congratulations on the summit. Thanks, Mary. The oh, time wonderful. I was there was very, very nice. Um, yeah. I went and did some you know, networking and walking around and I felt it very nice. Well, we can Same. go right into the next thing, review and discussion of the Canyonlands Business Summit. Yeah. Yeah. Did we do it last month? We didn't do anything. Is there well, we had the January meeting, but we haven't had time to put the meeting minutes together. So oh, okay. That's right. we'll, they'll be eventually okay. on the agenda, but <laughs> Ben and I and Melissa and Robert's brains are yeah, melting into meeting. soup. So mm -hmm. we're, <laughs> once we're done with this, we'll play catch up, but. It was really nice. Awesome. Yeah, any other feedback or thoughts while we're here? Chanel or Daniel, while you're online, if you have any remarks about the business summit, I know you were both there. Yeah, well, August, I, I really, I liked it. <coughs> I thought it was um, really well done as well as I liked the turnout, um, the networking opportunities. And all the discussions I felt were very lively, but also very respectable um, input was received as well. Awesome. The one yeah. comment I would share, <clears throat> the final panel of the day, unfortunately, kind of got ignored. Um, yeah. And I think, I think if we had rearranged them to go before the housing panel, we would have had everybody there at the end. I, I totally agree. And Ben and I mentioned that at the end of the day as well. I, I just had to get some work done. <laughs> well, it's Sharon's fault. We've determined that we can move on. Sharon left Ilo. <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> cool. I think though with the last um like the last presentations with the last panel too, um some of the questions were sidetracked, I felt like. So some of them were yeah. very prolonged answers, um, Great. which lost people's attention as well. Um so I think if they had the questions ahead of time, would they just need to know to keep it more brief instead of longer longer answers because it loses people? Totally agreed. Thanks, Chanel. Yeah. What was that woman think that she um, 
is the MC the last one? Z, Z Minzow. Z. She didn't have a, some slideshows for her first one. So I was a little confused. I don't know if it was like a um, computer error, but like when she first spoke before lunch, it's kind of looking around like it's supposed to go up. It was quick. Right, yeah. She spoke very quickly. The intention there, I'll just briefly speak to you. She runs the Center for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging at EDC Utah. And we wanted to bring her on to MC this last event and had some conversations about, you know, kind of isolating the kind of diversity, equity, inclusion language to this last thing at the end of the day. We wanted to bring that up front and make it a part of the bigger conversation. So that's why she was included as that kind of first panel. But yeah, I guess not having a visual aid made it difficult to kind of understand what she was talking about. Yeah. So that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Cool. I heard some really good things with socializing and networking and all of that. There was just kind of people at the table were really good to be able to talk to. Um, and definitely, I heard a little bit of um, if we're going to focus on policy and planning, then we need to make sure that we have our commissioners and our council members there, which Mary was there and Gabe, um, just to, and Jason, sorry. <laughs> just, to, just to make sure that if that, that that they're kind of a part of that conversation because it's like there was some really good conversation and like now what do we do you know right. so just having some decision makers would be totally. in on that conversation um would be good if that's the focus and then um just a couple of i mean there were a few people that were looking for um some more like marketing type or like how do i like I don't know, I guess like personal assistance. business story. stories, tips, that kind of thing. Um, but all in all, it was, I heard really good. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're already uh, exhausted from it, but we'll yeah. do it again you know, I, I, uh, yeah. at some point. I just echo like what you said. Like I learned a ton of stuff yeah. about it. You know, I was pretty, like I was like, um, it was interesting, you know, from, during like the housing thing, you know, and from like, you know, I, I kind of wish that there would have been more um, government representation there mm -hmm. at it and stuff, because I was sitting there, and especially like during the housing thing, you know, um, it was it was great to be there listening to people, you know, people were like, you know, because I got, you know, I got things like, well, the cities did these ADUs, you know, it was like, you know, how do we pay for these? How do we, how do we afford, you know, this stuff, you know, or, or these are the other issues that I hadn't really thought about. So it was interesting having this whole room full of people, you know, and then throwing like, well, this is what we're running into. This is what we're seeing, you know, and I was like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. You know, it was, it was a great right. forum, you know, for, for hearing like issues that that I don't think that you, you hear in well, all the day stuff. Even you know, for me, business-wise, because we kind of always push like, well, businesses, maybe you can try to provide the housing. And then hearing some of the stories about what happens lawsuit wise I mean just some of the kind of the horror stories of when businesses do get involved with renting to their own employees and yeah. you know disgruntled employees and well just, and just put another <laughs> layer goes. of the issues of how right. and then what's the guy from Crescent View you know was great really you know he was he super good and, you know and I was just like oh man this is, this is way good. Really good so yeah. so what did it take uh we did not yeah. um Two points. One, along with everyone else, um, CNHA actually just had Friday and Saturday had uh, their board retreat, mm. and one of the items that were brought up was housing. Yeah. Because um, we're looking at and trying to figure out how we would be able to do housing not only for our own seasonal staff but for the seasonal staff for the Park Service, the Element Forest Service. Yeah. Um, so that's it was really good to be in on those conversations, um, and I'm glad Roxanne was there too. Um, to be able to hear hear the different things, you know, because we're we're on the ground floor trying to figure out how we're going to do this. Um, right. And then two, it was very obvious how much work you guys, the travel council and the economic development board or whatever, how much work you guys put into it. Yeah. Um, and I have to, Ben. I wish he was here. He yeah. He's taking the afternoon off. <laughs> he did amazing. Um, making sure everything stayed on schedule and making sure everyone knew where they needed to be. He did good. So kudos to you guys and to you guys. Yeah. Awesome. And I was wondering, Lacey, because I know like during the housing um, part, 
a lot of people are like asking the chamber to do stuff like did you feel like you have notes or like that you were pointed out or do you feel like you got a bunch so i i mean i think it was as far as the chamber goes there was just a lot of how can we get the information out and got the it. chamber was like yeah we can do that okay um so it's just a matter of yeah so reaching out to um Hasu and some of the they they were working on some information that they want to put through right. the got chamber, it. but but as far as i could tell that was kind of the biggest our chamber chats and communication and all of that we are more than happy to you know facilitate all of that conversation do you feel like you're you weren't singled out or like you have a better follow-up I, I mean i don't feel like singled out in particular what's that city in the county got well, it helps when Jason is quite literally the city councilor <laughs> to moderating the session. Yeah. Whose fault is this? Oh, my. Oh, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Who has to ask this question? Oh, I guess I will. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I do like the idea, though, of, with the timed entry and for the businesses that have CUAs. Yes, that. That, that would be well. so valuable to the MIC. Yeah. yeah. And I think that we can the do that. list of, of companies that have CUAs, because we get people all the time that want to go in on tour. Um, which, and I'm so excited with the That's time the entry, uh, they have the conditional use, use permit authorization. authorization. Yeah, permit. So, to get into our so they don't need timed entry if you're yeah. with a tour. And, you know, it's going to be so much nicer because all last year, every time they would close the park, they would say, well, can I get in on a tour? And it's like, no, tours can't even get in right now. Yeah. So it's going to be. That was the, nice. that was the, when I spoke with Senator Lee. That was what was the selling point was that people tours couldn't make couldn't do tours because of the line. Right. So, really? I said, yeah. So businesses are losing money. Yep. So I think that um, I mean, kind of to their point, I don't know that I want to be solely responsible yes. for knowing who can get in and who can't and on what like if it was revoked or not revoked but if it was on some kind of self-reporting like well, i'm sure hey, the nps can give you a list i want to be on this list NPS, you know? yeah, nps they, they can't. can't they can't, they can't. share it right so, so they would. yeah what? Weren't you there? The NPS cannot. No, I was. I was. Yeah. I was doing my own session. They, they yes. cannot. Well, they. I don't. They might give me a list internally. I didn't say they. They, they, they did not. They, 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 they didn't. They didn't want to manage a list. Right. Yeah. Because they, they didn't want to be responsible for who was on that list and who got their permits provoked, revoked, you know, or something. So yeah. they didn't. They didn't want to be managing it. Managing it or responsible for the information that they would have to be sending out. So yeah. we can yeah. definitely if a, provide if a wrong place. list got out, then yeah. All right. But we could definitely provide a place. So we say on the websites, maybe even on Discover Mobile, yeah. that could be updated in real time, and it's really on the business. Yeah. To if you want to be on that list, get yourself on that list. Well, right? I mean, we already have for all of our listings. You have a filter based off of if you want to go hiking or climbing. We can just add Arches CUA or Arches Tour as a filter. Yeah. I mean, we'd have to work with businesses obviously to update that, but that, I don't think technologically that'd be all that difficult. Don't you think, Robert? Yes. Okay. Love it when Robert says that. Um, I am right now actually was just designing, you know, because we have the sandwich boards that go outside. Uh -huh. And, you, you know, usually both sides are the same. And it says this is our hours and this is what we do inside here. So I actually designed it. So the one side will be that. And then the other side is all going to be timed entry information. Nice. Um, with a QR code on it and everything. So awesome. people will be able to, even if we're not open, we're going to, we're going to leave those outside and Normally we bring them in when we're closed just so they don't get damaged. We're gonna leave them outside so people, no matter what time of day they walk by, they can get that information. Cool. Well, while we're doing this, I would recommend that maybe the chair moves us on yep. the agenda so we can get to that. Perfect. Um, next is review and discussion of proposed strategy to develop an economic de development master plan. So I put a proposal up and my goal was to talk about it today. We also talked about it earlier today with our kind of economic development boards and more or less the conclusion was that this was half baked and we needed to talk to the planning and zoning office first and make sure that we were in line with the um, general plan and strategic plan kind of before we get really into it but the the main core of it um and we can we can still look at the document kind of as i proposed it that the, the main intention is um 
And this could also be called, you know, a master plan task force or something like that. But having a separate group that is focused on planning for economic development, we call it a steering committee too, that is separate from kind of executing this year's activities and only kind of brings in the, the folks. So, you know, the, the chair of the board, the chair of the other board, um, to kind of guide the planning process for our whole department as a whole, including tourism, including diversification, including film, all of the above. And, you know, starting to sketch out what do we want to get out of a plan, including, you know, interviews with all stakeholders and community engagement and establishing goals, long term measurable objectives and benchmarks for those things, ways to do internal data tracking and external data reporting, and then bringing in some kind of subject matter experts to make sure that, you know, we're covering all of our bases. Um, so I think generally this is going in the right direction, um, but I've had some some difficulties trying to think of how to build the plane flight at the same time. So I think where we're where we're going, what I'm leaning towards is for the boards that we already have, including this one, focusing on execution of activities that we've kind of already got in the pipeline, and then I'm going to kind of work to create a parallel process with folks that are involved in these kind of 2022 programs, um, so that they know what we're working on to start doing the longer term planning uh, and kind of do something that is ideally more live, actionable, and less a document that sits and does nothing. Uh, that's the goal in, in general sketches. And um, Kaylin, yes, we would have the city be involved. So any other kind of general notes on this, knowing this isn't kind of really a plan that I'm gonna like run with tomorrow. The next thing. Okay. What? What did you say? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on Thursday. Yeah, okay. Um, any thoughts online, Daniel or Chanel, before I move on? Or before Jenny moves us on, I should say. Nothing for me. Okay. Nothing for me either. Thanks, y'all. Okay. Um, on to the next one review discussion of 2022 priorities. Um, specifically the two things I mentioned, just sent that email to everyone about arches timed entry. Um, I'll start. I came up with uh, some ideas and I also talked to Kate yesterday at the networking event at Dewey's, um, the airport board meeting. Andy, are you still here? Oh, nope. so. Um So I mentioned it at the airport board meeting yesterday too, um, that like if we have a poster from National Park Service at the airport um, and she said she has some or just to kind of work on that and just um, I was kind of coming up with some taglines. I know Richard and I, um, Robert and I, sorry, I'm thinking of Richard from Rocky Mountaineer. Um, we're thinking of some things just like taglines, like that reservation, like, you know, since you hear Arches is online now, something for either billboards or posters, if we want to, as a travel council advisory board, kind of go forward with that, um, help out Robert as well as maybe at the airport too, um, thinking what we could do for Marketing. Cool. So adding airport stuff to this list. Yes. Great. Just thought of it yesterday. Love it. Um, but Kate liked it too from Arches. Um, she's gonna we're gonna reach out together and meet with Andy and see what we can get approved for at the airport. Um, but any other ideas what people are thinking about? Um, are we planning on putting them on the messaging boards off that are on the corners? Yes. The, the, the locator boards? Yeah. Okay. We hadn't written that down, so it's actually locator. great. Locator. Locator. With an O. That one by the Maverick, right? South of town, that one? There's on. And the, there's not a billboard. Not a billboard. These are the kind of like triangular Got it, uh, right. Right. public. Got it. Okay. Yeah. We have like 11 by 7. Okay. If you can even get some prints of, of that as well, we can see how many businesses are willing to display them in their windows up and down the street. Should, absolutely. Whatnot. Isn't Kate getting everyone some? Because I've I'm got, like, yes. I've actually gotten three files from her. Yep. Three different ones. I mean, because she, she sent me the file for the rack cards too, um, so that I could try to use them on my board that I'm making. Um, I think a good place to start would be maybe just catching everybody up on some of the work that we've been doing with some of our stakeholders, because I think she'll capture a lot of these questions first, and then we can look at what we're missing. 
is it is it possible to create um, a QR code? You know, they were talking about doing the QR code that just goes right to the reservation system. Yep. You know, they already have. Them. Yeah, but I'm wondering, is there a way to create a QR code that is um, that would tag back to Discover Moab or the Travel Council, so that we could um, identify when we're when we're looking at what's working, like going, hey, look at we actually the QR code the Discover Moab put out got this many. Um, like tracking track it yeah the way to track well it. robert do you want to talk about the the jeep safari ad because i think that kind of captured that at some level well yeah i mean that's 100 percent doable yeah because we have a jeep safari ad out um and uh we have a qr code on it goes to the jeep safari magazine yeah it goes to a responsible motorized recreation video oh cool and it goes Pull that up for your, for your yeah, that would be interesting to see who gets them off the locator boards or yeah, or any of our the magazine online. Yeah, yeah, to see kind of track like where people are getting the information from. Is it getting it from local businesses, the locator boards, you know, you billboards, say. magazines, you know, it, you know, just give be a good way to. Mm -hmm. well, that, that, that's a great idea because if it instead of just going to the reservation system, if it goes to discover all that, yeah. it also goes to the sea lake. For sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it can even be just as simple as just like a redirect at the counter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, for certain, anything that we put up, um, we're going to do that so we can kind of track specifically what's going through us. Yeah. For the rack cards, um, probably can't change that based off of what MPS has approved. But right. if it's anything that's like third party that we're working on. Do you have an example of that? Okay. Well, I was going to pull it up, but I don't, is the Easter Jeep Safari Magazine online, yeah. I think they do have the. They have, yeah, the printed ones are on. I have that in my office, but if it, if you'll give me thirty seconds, I'll see if I can find it. You still have to get final approval. Yes, you have to get final approval. It doesn't. It doesn't link to the video because we have not approved it yet. It doesn't need to make the page. Yes. Uh, I think I, I'm gonna beat you. Well, I don't know. Here we go. Would print it. I'm just thinking for businesses as far as like we could send them an email that has it, but but then they have to print it and they have to hang it. And whereas if it was already printed and I right. took it to here them, we are. and I took it to them. Yeah, and I would like are, it would get <laughs> I would like to see our QR code at the businesses versus yeah, the park service QR Agreed. code. Oh for sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I think that'd be good. Yes. So I think when we're like going back and you know kind of filtering the data and you know telling the arches you know like hey we you know this relationship we're very much a part of this you know relationship and help me get the word out and stuff so this is the ad that we placed in the jeep safari um magazine it's right below the like presidents of red rock four wheelers letter so it's going to be something a lot of people see it says recreate responsibly in moab um and uh, it it links you to basically a how to behave on the trail as a motorized recreational user video that we have not, we're gonna send it to the, the commission for review um, before we make the link live. Right now it just goes to an info page. Um, so I have a question then, yeah. um, because all, right now all overnight rentals are required to post all of this in their place of business. Would that, that QR code satisfy that? Do you know if that would satisfy that um, requirement? Um, that I will mention that on here. So maybe when we get to that, we can dive into that for a second. So that might be more palatable if it was just yeah. like, hey, stick up this QR code instead of, hey, stick up this long list of rules. Yeah. So I'm going to propose that I just kind of go through our kind of our, our current kind of like work plan. Mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of uh, nitpick based on that. Does that sound, okay. does that sound okay. good? So this is right now, this is basically a working document um, that is the result of conversations between our office, the NPS, the Utah Office of Tourism, the Utah the Governor's Office of Public Land, the Public Lands Policy Coordinating Office of the Utah Governor, and um, you know, this kind of ongoing stakeholder building that's been kind of really great for this process. And so this is kind of like not just our office, this is also what other collaborators are doing. 
So starting with um, the, our, our office is going to, um, Melissa, maybe you wanna to speak to this kind of the plan with love for the educational campaign. Um, where we're at for um, launching an educational advertising campaign um, with love, looking at YouTube and all of that. Well, we don't have any contract with love communication yet, so I don't know if we're going to contract that. The next that. Right. Okay. This is, that's a good point. So basically, we, we put aside $200,000 for our contribution to um, Arches Time to Entry educational kind of advertising material. Um, and the lion's share of that, we want to do a targeted digital campaign going to TripAdvisor banners, YouTube, kind of those five second ads before you watch a video, um, and paid social media to get people who are, you know, targeting, we're really trying to target people who are going, already looking to visit our area, already looking to visit Arches and Moab, and increase awareness about time to treat kind of in a, in a proactive way rather than a reactive way. And as our contract with Love Communications expired at the end of last year, we had to figure out how do we move forward as quickly as possible on this um, while navigating the county purchasing policy. So basically for anything under, and they gave us a quote of like, they, they, would, they would charge 20,000 in professional services to do 200,000 of uh, placement basically. So helping to design and plan and um, actually um, launch that, which is a discounted rate. Um, so in that category, that amount of funds, we need to do three email uh, quotes, basically. Melissa went ahead and reached out, I think, five or six um, agencies. So we have a bunch of competitive plans and uh, costs. We are still off. Uh, yeah. Plus, now they are working with the state, so they know the market. So, yeah. In our opinion, we discussed with Robert and others, and we decided to deal with love communication. Yeah. The other agencies are really good, but they are not like tourists, focus on tourists, so they don't know exactly who you are. Yeah. So we decided to go to love communication. So now it's the next step. Yeah. The next step is actually getting a contract in place, going through the do, going through the purchasing agent and actually making that happen. But there's, we're pretty good on a, on, a, on a draft plan. We have a meeting tomorrow internally to kind of with love to sort that all out. But at this point, we're pretty much ready to press the button. I think Chanel. Chanel, I think you might, um, I'm gonna mute you if that's all right. Um, and then the other kind of part of that to, to take action is that Robert's gonna, coordinate with um, Kate from the NPS and Mark Finley to figure out if we can't cut up the video that they produced into kind of a shorter, snappier 15 and 30 second cut that can be kind of placed specifically online for, for targeted ads because a five minute informational video isn't going to capture people's attention. So Robert's on that. And then um, we would before placing anything, run that kind of material to the county and NPS to make sure that everyone's comfortable with what's actually there. Um, any questions on that before we go to the next kind of thing? Okay. I would just say like as quick as possible, just because that is yep. the number one feedback we heard from all of the other yep. destinations was like, get it out and get it out early. Okay. Do, well, can meeting we tomorrow. help with anything? Yeah, can we help? I think right now, all we have to do is get a contract that, that covers all of the kind of- We have actually a part of that. I just need to check tomorrow and be more specific with the numbers yeah. of what they're going to propose to us. Yeah. Right. And then, if, if and then we just need to get stuff signed. Better, and we just say, all us, start the boss. So what's the next step for that? Who, who signs yeah. is that to go to the commission? So the, um, I believe the, count, the commission chair, so Gabe has to sign off on that contract. And then um, I, tomorrow, after we figure out exactly what we want to do with love, I would work with Mallory and Chris to get the county's legal um, kind of ICA, inter independent contractor agreement, uh, fleshed out, agreed by both parties, signed by both parties, and then we fly. So Chris, cool. Chris, is um, well, Chris is a purchasing agent, so he has to. Uh, 
Um, yeah, so the goal is to, to get that sorted this week and signed by the end of next. I mean, if we could target next week's um, commission meeting for signing, that'd be ideal. Uh, or, or we'll sign it and ratify it, something like that. Yeah. So, and then another one I wanted to mention on here is that uh, the state um, Office of Tourism has hired Love for in-state public relations on kind of a number of issues, recognizing that um, doing PR outside of the state is obviously important, but for stuff like this, where there's a lot of questions and, and kind of intrigue about these kinds of things, having a focused in-state PR uh, specialist is going to be important. So that's not our relationship, but that kind of is an asset that we can lean on uh, collectively for, for time entry. And then um, this is kind of a, um, a bigger push, um, again, in the short term. But we're, Melissa is going to work with UTIA and the Utah Office of Tourism to put together kind of an email that captures, if you're a business, what do you need? Here's all of the, um, the rack card information. If you want to print them out, then you can do that yourself. If you don't, um, this, you know, will be getting some of those rack cards physically and we'll be going out and distributing, um, providing some um, messaging for kind of like typically asked questions from visitors, especially people who are kind of upset with the system in general and kind of how do we want a message that collectively as a community and as a state, we think that this has an opportunity to make our visitor visitor experience and try to kind of equip local businesses with those really you know, short-term answers. So this is, this is kind of the messaging we're recommending. Um, and so Melissa is going to work with the Office of Tourism and ETA to kind of do, to draft that. And then once ready, we're going to send it out through all of our business licensees in the county. Um, we're going to share that with the chamber to distribute locally to everyone on their list. The state office of tourism is going to distribute it to everyone on their list for everyone else in the state who might get people asking questions about um, Arches Time Entry and then so is UTO. So that'll that'll get, I think, really good reach for kind of best practices for for visitor for businesses who are experiencing questions from visitors. And, um, and then locally, kind of do one on one follow ups. Um, Robert and Melissa are going to once we have the rack cards physically um, and then we have the outdoor adventure guides we've already printed kind of go business to business and say, do you have, a, does this make all sense to you? Do you have a plan for implementation? Um, and we'll bring you free rack cards and free outdoor adventure guides. Um, if you want to come, if you want to have us come just chat with you, make sure everything makes sense. Yeah. Um, one thing that Rachel and I noticed when we were trying to put together the side of our board, everything the park service has given us, you know, great information on how to get, the reservations and if you're here and you want day you know the next day whatever one thing that they did not put on there that we might want to remind people you only need one reservation per, per car day. yeah not, and the reason that's so big to us is we get people coming in all the time that have purchased a, a online auto auto tour and there was one auto tour company that we actually had to call in and say hey you guys need to quit you need to make sure it's a little more clear. People were coming in and they had purchased an auto tour. And it says how, ma how many people. Mm -hmm. And so they were getting charged. Like if there was a car for five people, they were going to charge $50. Right. For the like same each for person auto. was paying for an entry. It's, it doesn't even get you in the park. That's just the auto tour oh. to listen to. Oh, you I didn't understand what you were talking about. And, and we, we actually rent an auto auto tour, an audio tour yeah. for five dollars. Huh. Oh, and they were buying them online and it was you had to say how many people, so it charged you 50, like a ten dollars per person. And these people were going, and it's like, we're so sorry, it's not us, it's not we have nothing to do with it, but you just pay you you only have one radio. <laughs> It comes through your, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. or through the audio system. Totally. So yeah, people were paying for their whole family instead of just per vehicle. So totally. maybe make sure it says per vehicle. And that's, we made sure we put a line on our board saying it's per vehicle. Oh my God. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, that makes me think of the FAQs for just the system in general. I mean, we're going to emphasize those, but I, I wonder if there's a way 
well, yeah, to just, just make sure everyone knows. It's like, I almost want to like run a small exam for every business owner. <laughs> what happens if it's 5.59, it's the day before and there is a ticket available. Can you or can you not get a ticket? <laughs> we can make it like a game show. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny, actually. You do it one more minute and get online and get one. <laughs> that would be actually kind of fun. If, you know, who knows if anybody has the bandwidth to do it. Yeah, yeah. Just a bunch of... But ha have like, if we partnered with KZMU and made it, like, it could be, you know, if they do pub trivia, it could be like kind of a, a daytime fun at the mark, you know. Yeah. You win a prize if you get everything right. People could send their stuff. I mean, if we did it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on down. So, um, what if I don't have and a reservation the section? Button. Yeah. I realize that people have arches on their desk, their top controls. Yeah. But currently, when they get turned away, they get like, here's other places you can go. Yeah. And so, is that part of the what if I don't have a reservation information? The That's park it. service is going to supposed to be coming up with it. We have at the MIC, we have papers that say you know what yeah. you do and, and we're actually going to redo those to say we can't get into our just stay with this so what so yeah, what, what we're thinking for now is that robert's already put together the outdoor adventure guides yeah. and at least for our office rather than develop like a specific time entry suggestion because then everyone's going to go to those whatever top five places like here is uh pre-selected you know it's everything it's just everything that's not right. NPS, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like eighteen biking trails and all the dining yeah. work tracks. So it's, it yeah. gives them a wide variety. You can't just spread them all out. Right. Yeah. And we already yeah. have them. We want to update them anyway, so we kind of need right. to use them. Uh, so that's one thing that we're going to provide as kind of part of this business package is that, uh, and would obviously provide that to the bank or anyone else. Great. Yeah. Good questions. We're going to send them to your house. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get into art, just go have lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have have lunch with the city councilor instead. Like an artist. Exactly. Um, what about um, OH OHV and UTV regulations, like the new noise ordinance? Um, and where we're at with that. What, is her name Christine? Is the attorney? No, not no, not her. Um, with the BLM, just like what we could do regulations, like if we can do that um, placard that you're talking about a couple months ago, Jason, how to spread the word Did, for the new regulation. I thought I saw something with Chrissy was working on the yeah, placard. Um, yeah. So, we, so do, we might not have to. We do have that on the list um, once we're done with the arch and stuff. Can we do anything like as advisor we're like split up with that one as well as like the, um, the rules and regulations to achieve that marketing grant for the 5,000, just kind of create those if it's right yeah. now in this meeting or else like afterwards me reaching out, whoever wants to work on those two individually and we can help with those the next month as a board. Absolutely. Um, and and I'll mention that on the next, um, once we're done with Arches Time Entry, um, if we want to cover that. Does that feel good? Yeah, are you not done arches? No, there's more. Oh, I thought you were done arches. Sorry, nope. I was like, okay. That was more. just the first two things. Oh, okay. So the rack cards, they the MPS has ordered 150,000. They are going to send us some number of pallets of those for our office. Some number of pallets? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. And um, the State Office of Tourism has translated those into four languages, I believe, French, German, Mandarin and Spanish, right? But they but that hasn't been um, updated on the rack cards and they haven't worked them yet, but that's in their pipeline to do. Um, again, the outdoor adventure guides. And then some more in-market physical messaging um, or we've talked about using those kind of traffic signs, flashing signs. I know that the county used that for the mask ordinance. Do you familiar who who did that? Was that UDOT or was that a county? Roads? Yeah, well, as I recall, there are city signs, like City Public Works or something. Yeah, they, just, they were located in the UDOT right of way, and so yeah. UDOT has to that. negotiate with UDOT about what yeah. messaging was appropriate. Cool. So right now we've proposed signs north and south of town on 191, east and west of 70 on the, of the Moab exit on 70 that say Archestine Dentry required these dates. Here's the link. And um, Bianca at the Office of Tourism is going to try to work with her contacts at UDOT to, to get that started. 
So that's starting to happen. Bianca does stuff really fast, so it'll probably be done by the end of the week. Um, that's an exaggeration. I have no idea. Um, I like this idea of airport-based messaging um, that we haven't really talked about or scoped out yet. Do you need any help with that? Or do you feel like no. you can kind of take that? Around? I can do it with Kate and Andy. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna. I'm trying well, to mark. Rocky who's... Mountain Air is there a sign Ooh, where question. they where they unload? That... I was gonna mention that. That's that a good could, point. We could put a sign up, you know, where they disembark from the train and get onto their buses. So or they in the buses. They are working with the Mac. So. Not the Mac. Mac. Yeah. The Mac. So I don't know. I mean, if you, can you allude to it a little more? Mac. Or else I can. Could... Um, well, you know, so we're doing tours for Rocky Mountaineer in the park and stuff. So people will be getting off the train if they signed up for a tour. They'll be, we'll be doing um, guided tours with them. So we'll be doing running a couple buses every day, you know, through there. Um, but they're also dropping people off at the Mono Adventure Center to pick up rental cars as well as Enterprise. So I think having something it's on the counter of enterprise, you know, and these places to let people know that, hey, if you're renting a car, you're planning on the arches, you need to get a time to entry kind of thing. So, um, yeah. so I think that um, having, having some sort of placard that's even the same placard that's in hotels, you know, could be on the counters of these car rental businesses as well. So, is that I something? think for hotels, Sorry, um, I think for hotels too, the rat cards will be super helpful. And then I know all of our properties, what we're doing is in any arrival, um, we do, they're called pre-arrival emails that get sent out with their confirmation number and whatnot. We're actually adding it to that, that information so that people are aware of the timed entry um, for any reservations past that March 3rd date, just so that everyone's aware as far as all of the guests that our hotels represent. And I would assume that a lot of hotels will be following suit as far as that goes, because that's information you can put in the pre-arrival email. Yeah, we're also doing a, a whole web page, you know, one of our pages that we've got it, you know, um, we'll have a whole thing on it for Moab Venture Center, which we're like, discovered Moab, and it's like, I think it's us, right? You know, or most of the time. So we're really doing a big push, you know, to Sweet. make that an information page as well. Great. So, I mean, I would hope that sending an email with those digital assets, of the links, the QR codes, the, the, the kind of NPS pre-approved messaging, that that will be enough to for the businesses to kind of fit whatever their needs are. And then the idea of having those follow-ups will be able to, you know, I think most the most proactive and on the ball businesses probably already have a plan, but I'm sure there's going to be laggards and people um, that we're going to have to be kind of proactively working with. So I think that'll be a partnership between likely the chamber and ourselves to get the legwork to make that happen. Um, so we've got planes, trains. Yeah, and automobiles. automobiles. This is impressive. <laughs> so, this, is, this is an impressive rollout. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the last thing is like, we we're, were thinking maybe not so many billboards, but um, one that came to mind when I was driving down from Salt Lake, because there's a handful of billboards in Wellington right after you leave the gas station. Every single person driving down from Salt Lake is going to drive past it. And it seems to be kind of underutilized, honestly. So I would imagine that that would not be a bad place to kind of consider doing one, at least. Um, and then, you know, the, the 70 and 191 focused on the you dot flashing signs. But um, yeah, one thing to keep in mind, though, um, to imply the reservations are required on the billboards. Will be invalid, and that's something. Oh, that's true. We'll need to change them. That's you know, a good a point. Typical billboard is about three thousand dollars, but that's the vinyl printed and installed. Right. On top of the rental. Yeah. You could like April through September on it. Yeah, you could, but you know, you start to run into that. Really, should keep it to ten words. Yeah. You need to be able to read it in three seconds. Yeah. Right. So this is this is for Robert's billboard brain to think about is, yeah. is how I, what I would say. And then if Robert doesn't think this is a good idea, it's not going to happen. But what about doing a digital billboard? Because I've seen Moab on digital billboards in right. LA. Yeah, we've done all three years. Those have, that's not a bad idea. They have lower time frames. You yeah. Know, um, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what about the little advertising things on the gas pumps? 
at Wellington because everyone uh. stops at that gas station. <laughs> That's a good point. Or even on the <laughs> Maverick. Yeah, you guys ever looked at how to get on those Maverick scary. videos? <laughs> I'm getting yeah, ours everywhere, and that same video plays everywhere. I mean, there's like so ads. I remember that Elaine tried to do that last yeah. year, but it cost a lot of I money. Yeah. Yeah. What do they call that? Out of phone. Yeah. 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 So I think doing this specifically targeting, which is focusing on online and getting, being more, you know, surgical with who we're reaching. Skywriting. There we go. Yes. Let's do that. <laughs> Skywriting. <laughs> okay. The last thing for this is to try to do some research about like the, 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 everything we talked about is communications oriented. And the last thing is we've, we've set aside $50,000 for kind of research and evaluation. Um, I don't know if you all remember, but last summer, Wayne Freeman came and he spoke about kind of a general visitor dispersion research project, right. um, which kind of got tabled and then Elaine left and then I started and then they kind of disappeared. So thinking of, of um, Wayne being um, who's a total expert in this, to kind of lead um, a research project to build off of the, the research that NPS is already going to do within their park boundaries to help get a better understanding of what's going to happen to the surrounding public lands, Corona Arch, Grand Staff, Dead Horse, um, and kind of be a coordinator of all of that. Try to take advantage of cell phone data that I believe we've already kind of supported for him to use, slash the cell phone data we pay for, um, and then do that on the ground surveying. And um, kind of a, and a bonus addition would be wrapping in a simple economic Kind of analysis what happens to the general economy not you know not the kind of forecasting that led to the initial uproar about this just saying simply after the fact this is what happened it, the economy grew by five percent and time actually happened and that was the same thing that happened last year so you know that kind of stuff i think would be really good if we're doing evaluation of, of time entry wasn't there something like wayne freeman was or someone else was doing the same thing that he was and so we were like thought it was a double, well, double we had it might numbers. have been i think it was the it was the the so. park service mm -hmm. and okay. the, yeah yeah so there's a cover because he when he was first presenting he was talking about going and doing it in the parks too and it's like we don't need it in the parks oh, okay. yeah it was that would be double yeah anyway. so in this case what, what i'm proposing to start um would be to reach out to wayne set up a coordination meeting with our office, Wayne, Amy Tendig from the park, who'd be doing the research for NPS, and um, this woman, Denise, who's the research manager for the State Office of Tourism, um, and just get that started, get that ball rolling, see what's feasible with the amount of money that we've set aside, if we need additional support, who else can get involved, because um, I just think that's going to be super important to, after this pilot happens, have a clear understanding of Oh, this was great. This was this actually improved visitor experiences, and I agree. we made more money, or it made visitor experiences actually suck more, and the economy tanked. Uh, you know what I mean? And having a clear and objective. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be science, interesting. This, this yeah. whole next year is going to be interesting. But it seemed like Wayne like wasn't the fifty that we had to come up with. He was doing it in conjunction with Utah State, and they were coming up with some of the money too. And stuff. So yeah, I think it's good to get the conversation going to see i don't know if 50 grand is going to be the final amount yeah. maybe stuff has to move around but i think that it's a super huge priority for us to like get going for sure uh, i think we have enough time it gives us about two months before it starts to i guess the last thing was whether that's they're doing it or our office is doing it having some sort of kind of community-wide survey that that if you come to visit the moab area some kind of uh, gauge of general satisfaction as a result of, of time entry so that we can what people are saying. Uh, and then hopefully that goes into this and feeds that um, throughout the system. Because maybe the first month is like, oh my God, I hate it so much. And then by the end, it's like, oh, we used to. Well, yeah, it'd be good because like rec.gov has those email addresses. You know, if there's a way that we Great could question. get those email addresses from rec.gov to send them a survey after they, their trip date so that we can find out. Oh, we got a free. What's that? Free survey. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to find out how right. satisfaction is afterwards, but do we have a baseline of yeah. what, what was it like? Do we have that? 
we don't, the parks does. They, so they last year, I think May and June, they created a baseline survey and they're gonna ask the exact same questions, the exact, and do the same socioeconomic kind of indicators um, for this year. So they actually, they have a really great scientific method for this in the parks. Cause it seems like we're doing a lot for the park. You know, and, and obviously okay. it's something to benefit us, but you know, I think having like that those email addresses in the park could really go to bat yeah. for us to get those ranked out. Yeah, or if they just know. collect it and give us yeah, the answers. Just give us, yeah, exactly. We give them the survey, give rec.gov the survey, that rec.gov send it out, and then we yeah. uh, get the results. I don't think they'll give us the emails, they but yeah. but they could potentially work with us to do some kind of customer satisfaction. Okay. Those surveys that you had yesterday. Those yes. Awesome. That's the first time I've ever done any of those. Oh yeah. I mean, I've never seen that. I didn't even know what that was called. Mentimeter. Yes. Is there a way we could? I mean, how easy or how hard would it be to to like set one of those up? Can you keep them open long term? Sure. Um, and then have have like either a QR code that goes to it, like sitting at the mix, saying how what how was your experience right. or. You know, and or yeah. and maybe even other places, and just see if people will go on and 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 answer. You know, just a couple little short yeah questions. Did like did you have a reservation before you came? Yeah. How you know, and then how was your experience, or you know, rated from one to whatever? And um, yeah, I think something. Did you spend more time downtown, or how you know? Did you or did you visit the downtown stores or anything like that? Just. Get some of those just minor questions answered. Or maybe even having to include if you didn't get into the park, what did you do? What did you do? Yeah. Yeah. Daniel? I was just going to say, you don't need to spend a lot of money on that. My hotel guest will tell me and I can let you know what they say. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good job, Daniel. Right. Totally. Yeah. But some way to capture that over time. So we kind of. Yeah, and, well, I mean, that. I even, my first thought was, well, I could just come up with a short little handwritten one and then. You know, I put it in my, you know, put it on a checklist or whatever. But, yeah. but then it's like that's more work for me. Um, I, I think the simplest thing would <laughs> if we be, could do it online, it'd be easier. I'm sure we could do a simple Qualtrics survey. That's you know that is like the same, the same questions the whole time, one link, and anybody can distribute it anywhere. Right. Uh, and then we just hey, scan this and then do your thing. You can do it on your phone in two minutes. I, I really, so I was really, I really liked that. QR codes are back. I got one question, um, a little bit off topic here, but when they go to rec.gov, they have to create an account if they don't yes. have one. Is that correct? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So we may need, I mean, hopefully that's not too intimidating to, to most of them, but I'm just thinking there's some that might need just like a, hey, heads up, you, you need an account to do this, or you need to get an account, but it's easy. Or I not. think once you go Maybe to rec.gov, if you go to do it, they, it says you have to do it. You have to have it. Yeah. Sign up. I think, uh, you, I think it says you have to sign up for it. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. sign up. it's just time. It's time consuming, but not that bad. Yeah. It's just a couple extra steps you gotta do. Okay. okay. Cool. Um, well, there are non archetypometry related things we can talk about if you're ready to fly into that corner of the universe. Daniel, is your hand still raised? Did we miss something? Or is that leftover from? OK. Yeah, sorry, leftover. No worries. OK. So I think this is what you were talking yep. about. So at this point, I didn't, I didn't know Christina was working on this. I just saw an email the other day yeah. that, that said that she was um, working on it because when I was talking I've been kind of going back and forth with like the the, the new Title Five, yeah, yeah, you know, um, which um, which I don't know. I, I, there's some there's some things in Title Five. We can get into it later, but I think that the the, the Travel Council should be involved with you know, because. Um, but anyway, um, but with this, um, yeah, and Christina just said something that she was um, doing, putting something together for it. So maybe we should touch base with her and see. Yeah. You know, um, also with this and the commission also the city needs to kind of follow is that there is, um, there's a bill on the Hill for OHV education. Have you guys seen that bill? Mm -hmm. Which is getting, um, it's, a, it's a bill that says um, that if you rent, own, 
rent or own an OHV, um, you have to take this class. Oh, wow. It's an online education class. It talks about obeying the law, you know, staying on the trail. You know, a lot of, there's a lot of really good things in this bill. And if you don't, you're held liable for it. Like you oh, can be- um, What's the bill number? Do you want to um, it? 51. Oh, it's there's, not 180. Maybe it is 180, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure house bill or Senate bill? Um, but it's a, and I, I asked Christina about it and she was like, oh yeah, I forgot to bring it up to the commission the other night, you know, stuff. But part of this bill um, is it goes over this stuff. And if, so if you're, um, if you're renting an OHV um, from a company, you have to, you have to be certified. So you have to take this class. You have to get the certification. Oh, even if you rent, not even, even if, if you're, you're getting it. And if you're owner, you have to take this class as well. And then um, what happens too is for the city and the county, which I thought was pretty interesting is, is that you are um, registered a license plate, like a big, like a big numbered license plate. So it's getting rid of the tiny decals that go on the side. The state will be issuing um, big license plates so that um, if you see this person doing something wrong, you, can actually you got see big it. numbers. You're not trying to get that little tiny decal. And um, so it's actually, um, it's looking pretty good. The, um, and um, even UTV, OHV, ATV groups are all signing onto this bill. Oh, and, wow. and they're saying that um, oh, they're, they and they're, are? And they're Well, there was a few it. things in yeah. the first draft that it. they were like, no way. But no, I have but a concern it's... because a lot of people come to town, purchase their OHV permit from us. How would we be able to issue them this great big no you wouldn't be issuing it. it's issued See, by the so it's, they have to it's do it issued, before they ever come it's here. issued by the state but well no so this is utah registered vehicles oh, just yeah utah, utah registered, registered vehicles, vehicles. so vehicles not visiting right? not visiting people all ohv vehicles so yeah. only utah so, state so it would be replacing that little decal and how would would there be reciprocity with other states? Even there is no don't? reciprocity with any no, states anywhere. No, but what the base there is for on street. It's only if they're street legal license plated. And then actually, there are some states we are not reciprocal with. And if you ask the comp, the state, which states those are, and give us a list, they say, "Oh, we don't have a list yet. We don't, we're not sure." I know. I asked this years yeah. ago. And yeah, they, they don't know. Like I guess I guess I don't know what how how it. Um, works with out-of-state vehicles, you know, like if, if they come and they have to take this class and stuff. But I'm just saying, you know, for for rental companies, you know, things that we're dealing with a lot here, you know, um, it, it could be a very good, it could be a beneficial thing, you know, that, you know, they're saying that if you get caught, you know, going off trail, you could be fined or and have to do community service hours to to do all this stuff. So do you know if, because there was a couple concerns about that in that if they, you know, this number was reported and they were renting or even just lending out, say, to a friend, it was the owner of the vehicle who was cited That's rather than whoever, was, whoever yeah. was in so, it. And that was one major, major concern of, of the rental companies in town, but I don't know if that got addressed or not. I haven't you know, I don't know if it, it did get addressed either and stuff, but with that being said, the rental companies would all have to take this class. All the machines would have that bigger license plate on it, which may um, actually, well, you know, the rental companies are street legal license plated, so yeah. it's not really a license so, plate. It's a yeah, it's, um, it's a registration number. So anyway, so I'm wondering is if this if this bill passes, it could change what we what needs to be drawn up as far as um, as this placard that goes on on doors and what we're telling people because so we'll, 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 we'll want those things we'll want those two things to talk you know and to to correlate with each other well i mean the legislative so, session is less than a month from being done yeah we're so happy <laughs> you can check I so mean, um, i think it's what 23 days or something so anyway um and i i, I was gonna it's on my list to talk to christina more about it you know and see um, yeah, this is i mean i i see a a lot of pros for it. My issue is we have so many from out of state coming here. So how would I mean you? But, so well, they're not getting it anyway. You know, they're, they're coming from out, out of state. Right. You know, so I think, you know, I think it's worth going after the low hanging fruit of you know someone who's renting an OHV in Moab. We know, at least know that they're watching. They're having to watch this video before they take this razor out. You know, 
at which least I rentals, think, which I think, you're renting in town. which I think is, is a good thing. And then anybody from the Wasatch Front who's coming or anywhere else in Utah has to watch that video. Um, and um, when they, and I think that it's predicated on like your registration, like when you go to register your your UTV or whatever, you have to show them a certificate that you watch this video before you register it. So, so there's some things on here that I think, I think we should hold off on this okay. until we see what, what happens with, with that bill. So do you, are you going to like reach out to Christina and mention that? Yeah, I can. Yeah. yeah. I've been in contact with her. I'll just, I'll just make, so make you the lead then. Okay. Uh, Um, good to move on. Yep. Okay. So, um, there's a couple things with the UOT, um, cooperative grant program. A couple are just internal staff things that we need to work on, which are, um, completing some paperwork for the past grants, um, that are outstanding, um, that would give us, um, some grant money that we're owed that just wasn't completed when we got it when I got into the office and that we need to work on um, but but then for the future for the for the northern Utah flying grants that we applied for received commission approved the match dollars for um, I think that's a bigger question of figuring out um, what exactly that looks like I mean I, I, there is an application in place already um, and I think we're expected to, anyway, I don't, I, I don't exactly know what the next step is, but obviously our design industry is priority number one, but we do have basically a $300,000 total marketing campaign um, on the books for this year um, that the state is providing us with 50% of the money for. Um, the intention originally is, you know, targeting people who are flying in, who aren't driving a uh, an RV camping on public land and therefore spending more money in our community. I think, you know, like the train, people flying in are going to be higher dollar per impact uh, people. Um, the, the, when this was brought up, I put it on the pre-authorization list just because why not? Uh, it got flagged as something that the commission kind of wants to go over and figure out really what are the goals of this and how do we design it? and obviously making sure that whatever marketing that goes with it would be approved. But at this point, um, this would be another kind of love communications contract rather than this larger RFP it would be help us execute it. It'll cost us this much money. Uh, but I don't, I don't know right now, it doesn't seem like a huge priority given time to entry and everything we got going on. But at the same time, if we don't move on this, now is the time to do this kind of stuff. It seems like you should move on, move on for right now with uh, kind of a September, August, September, October. Yeah, you know, almost like shoulder visit, 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 visitation time, or or maybe for whatever. Because the airline quits flying what December fifteenth. End of so, November. End of November. So, so be, was it worth looking at promoting this for some? September and October are so busy, you know, it's yeah, so hard that, right. you know, it's like, um, yeah, Delta really stops should go out December, what? January, February, March. But if, but if you did it, if you, March, yeah. yeah, so it's just gone for four months. We, we have to spend the promotion this year. So we could do promotion like September, October, November, promoting Moab in, um, in March and April, you know, or whatever. Or for the following year. For the following year, depending on yeah. if we have that flight contract, you know. Um, one, one thing I wanted to ask perhaps the state on this is like, is there flexibility? Like our, our situation has changed in some ways. Um, like if we if we shifted the direction of this to support time entry or other kinds of things that are, you know, visitation oriented, because they're, they're kind of changing their perspective similar to locally that just inducing visitation isn't necessarily a good thing moving towards more quality visitation and, and towards, you know, the forever mighty side of things. So I would wonder if, if the commission and, and our body finds like a slightly different angle on spending this money, if they'd be comfortable with us 
shifting that. I don't even know if that's a possibility. I don't know if we want to do that, but that's I would. I don't think we should shift it towards time interview. That's that's a that's, we beat that horse to death at okay. this point, you know. And I think that. I think even like next pushing time it, fly, fly pushing today, it, like pushing so. it to other um, activities, you know, would be would be good. Well, and love can usually get things out pretty quick. If we yeah. got our contract and they wanted to start marketing in April and May for and bolster our summer season a little bit because yeah. we definitely do drop. That's a good point. In the summer, mm -hmm. so yeah 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 do a you know somehow promote it that you know mm -hmm. uh, stay you know do you know your your visitation time would be in the evening and you'll be relaxing during the day yeah. you know or something yeah. like that yeah like, uh, well and we can work with love and the data ecosystem that we're again going to renew that contract yeah. to look at areas of low book Bookings, yeah. times of low bookings, specifically try to use this as a visitation spreading mechanism, similar to timed entry, where it's like we could be very targeted of who we're approaching and when. And, you know, I, I, I would, I would, I think that if we can make it as targeted as possible and look, you know, okay, these weekends are down or this is low or whatever, dynamically pushing stuff at, at given times to try to spread that visitation out so we're not having huge spikes or at least being responsible for over the curve but yeah exactly the curve. and is it typically you just because i'm not sure with love do you just give them the money and say this is what we want to do like you know we work you with guys that. or do you guys have to they propose kind of an initial so, plan i say we have 200k yeah so we Okay. I mean, I don't want to spend a 200K in just digital, but give me something. Yeah. Maybe so I can compare with the other agencies. So basically, it's what they did and what they, what they gave to us. Right. So would you put an RFP out or would it just be love again? Like for this art, for yeah. this fly in? That would be another campaign to a new okay. other proposal. It'd be a separate contract. Yes. So now we want to do just kind of uh, love communication by campaign, not for the whole year because we are paying for low season, we are not doing nothing in low season, so right. we are just spending the money for nothing. So maybe what we need, if we need to do it by campaign and by contract, we need to also talk to them about yeah. the fly-in for summer. Because what we, what we could do is say, here's what we originally applied for, here's yeah. the content of the original application that was approved. Yeah, uh, if we if we were to you know, go forward this, what would you suggest on as a first blush yeah. for how we would execute this? Mm -hmm. And then maybe bringing that initial proposal to the commission and having that as the first conversation. I know I know that this will probably have to be reviewed at some point. Uh, Do you need the air, the um, grant from Northern Utah? Like, do we need the qualifications first? What do you mean the qualifications? Like, what it has to say or what it has to mention, like it's lines of business. Oh, like from, or, from the county's perspective? The county's or did you say like the airlines changing what they want? Now? That's a good point. Yeah, so well, because we also have separately uh -huh. an opportunity because I've, I've, we've That's been talking with Andy, mm -hmm. because we're a uh, essential air service grantee, they offer $20,000 of grant money to support um, the airport, marketing for the airport. Um, and we were talking to their staff at Sky West. Robert has been working on a great proposal to do kind of a billboard outside of the Grand Junction airport, like on your way from Grand Junction to Moab saying like, next time why don't you just fly to Canyonland instead of flying to Grand Junction. Yeah. Uh, Sky West took away some, a lot of the flights <laughs> in Grand Junction. So we're hoping to grab more of those people in Moab. Right. And, limited. and um, so anyway, during that process, they reached out to us and said, can we put a pause on this because we're getting so crushed by the Omicron wave. We're not staffing any. We have, we're having really problems staffing. We don't want you to like advertise at the moment because we can't handle additional volume. So I don't know if that ends. I I kind of imagine that's not going to be an issue in all, in the for the rest of the year. But that, that's why I mentioned it um, because they asked us to kind of put a pause on that. Robert, did I miss anything on that kind of project? No, no, it's pretty good. You know, I got an excellent deal on that. Um, Billboard because I'm dealing with a company that I've dealt with for 15 years. And they will actually print the vinyl and install it for free. Oh, wow. so, yeah. So literally, this 
at the bay, which is which is fairly inexpensive, a four hundred dollar home project. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. So and then and then that gets. I mean, then the whole grant would pay for that completely. And, but that would be a, kind of a separate exercise with Sky West. That's not really to try to get people to come here. It's more use the Canyonlands Airport specifically as a point of entry to Moab. So that makes Andy happy, and that makes Jenny happy. Um, it's all about making Andy happy. Kind of gets more in the red tail though. So. Yeah, there you go. Um, a couple other things I want to mention. Um, Basically, the way that that divides out the ad spend that's been budgeted, we budgeted 440,000 total for this year, 200 to timed entry, 150 to fly in, at least 90,000 for kind of various responsible recreation messaging. So stuff like that Jeep Safari ad um, is where that's kind of coming from. We haven't really made a plan for that, but we've talked, I've talked with us a lot about doing kind of shorter, Kind of TikTok and real style Instagram kind of things, or just working with our local Instagram influencers. We happen to have a lot of them that live yeah, here. So we, are, we have vegan in our office now, That's true. so it would be a huge skill to share and kind of working with the kids in the school, doing something, some funny videos. Or, yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of cool opportunities there. Uh, so discover me. Influencer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so that's not really scoped out yet, but that's there, and that'll probably be. I would imagine I'm gonna underestimate. We're probably gonna. I would. I would hope to spend. Not hope. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna assume we're gonna spend less than that because I'm gonna assume I'm gonna have to work with the budget somewhere, and that. I don't know exactly if that 90k is guaranteed. Um. And then for the there's been uh, kind of an ask from the commission kind of specifically really Kevin Walker's leading this to have uh, a review of how the ad policy um, is working out. So right now, obviously there's the responsible recreation ordinance and the language is kind of what guides us, but there's no mandatory review process. Um, and so I think what there has been suggested is a conversation about kind of what's needed, what should be changed, what could be changed. I think a happy medium is a process that we could implement where it's a non-mandatory review. So we're proactively weekly, bi-weekly, sending out every piece of, of placement um, ahead of time if we can, um, after the fact if we if we can't um, due to deadlines um, so that everyone on the commission is seeing every piece of, of material that's being produced. Because um, right now we don't really have a good kind of system of doing that, and there's been times where stuff pops up and the commission is kind of taken by surprise. And so that's my goal for that. Um, I think there is a, some appetite also for more of a mandatory review where we can't post anything until we get affirmative kind of approval. Um, but I don't know. I I don't know if that's the average of the commission wants that. But there's some level of potential change there. Um, so that would be a workshop that would need to be scheduled at some point in the year. Definitely when you have those conversations, just be mindful that like marketing is very time based. And so the more red tip, like if you have to get yeah, approval on every it, single I little thing, it gets so uh, <laughs> cumbersome. Yeah. But I think we just had a real good uh, policy on what is wanted or expected. Yeah. And, and we'd be more than happy, even without a policy change, to institute an internal process of regular reporting of what's going on. I mean, we, we, we yeah. keep track of everything. We would just need to make that a part of our weekly routine to just send that out. And we'd be, we'd be happy to do that. Yeah, and you could say with a lot more people who are shiny response. Sometimes there's a great deal. Yeah. If we can get some yeah. Yeah. visual or whatever. Yeah. Um, when you would need yeah. to get to the end of the year and have all this money that you couldn't spend because yeah. you have to wait. I mean, you just need to be able to do some months. Yeah. Well, and I can see too, like having like two people on the commission who you say, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna send it to right Mary and Jock, you know, and stuff," and then they sign off on it. But trying to get seven signatures, check marks, you know, right. when you're trying yeah. to get something done. I mean, just pick the people days. with the like the least appetite for whatever controversial content and it's like if it's passed it's going to pass you it's going to pass everyone else yeah so sarah and kevin like give make big them the review committee or something i don't know they would be the 
most uh, they would look at it closer. Right, and then and then that, therefore most things go through, and if something gets flagged, there can be conversation. I, th I think that's maybe three, three against one. Yeah, maybe well, three one against one. Seven commissions, two for three. Five conquer. Yeah, two three. So, so Mary, do you have any recommendations for for getting that to happen? Like, should we put put a workshop together to talk about that process? Wise, should I just like work with? I, I know. I would come up with some ideas of what you want. Yeah. Do you, what you think is a good idea? Okay. And then, uh, so, is the suggestion coming from your office or from? Uh, Kevin has brought up the idea of a review of the current policy. Why don't you talk to Kevin? Okay. I've had a he conversation has, with him. He has an idea of what he wants to see. Okay. I, I think he's going to avoid workshop. Agreed. Okay, I'll touch base. People I've talked to hate to say they don't have workshops, but they are trying to get something done. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. And it seems like just increasing the reporting a little bit because even though I've been sitting in these meetings, like I still don't like I don't really See, understand the. Approval flow and yeah. I haven't really seen I don't really see the ads unless I have to just go on the call. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if there's a way that we can make it more public facing or something where it's easy for at the very least. Yeah. Place, what we call it, I guess I'll probably try to develop some kind of reporting structure that's really easy and straightforward right. Right. and propose that and at least start with that. And if that's not meeting the muster. Then... So and the other thing that that's really good for is the public who seems to have kind of this distorted view about what the travel council puts out and then what is just out there. I mean, anyone can use a, you know, an image of arches and advertise whatever they want. Okay. <laughs> right? Well, and so. Um, so it's just one of those, it's not necessarily us putting it out and yeah, advertising. Right. This is one of the things we tried to do with the Green County Utah.net website, but you know, you're talking about traffic. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah I think with format is the county Utah website. And the commission has asked us the information last year that we want to know what the travel council is doing. That's what we create that list on the website. We have all the videos that they approved last year. So they can see everything. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, we get complaints about certain videos and things like that, not recently, but over the years, and it turns out they're not our video. Right. Oh, that was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> so we're obvious. Just looking for so okay, I want to fly through this so we, we get out of here at five. Um, the other last couple of things is just um, touching base on the billboards we already have contracts with. Robert's leading on this. Um, and uh, besides just ensuring that we're kind of our contracts are updated and everything is looking at um, kind of if we want to change what's on there. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you have anything that you want to share on that. Well, because I know we talked about the noise ordinance and all of that. Kind of thing, you know, since that was just something we put out there. The only issue is it's that 10 border three second rule that you really shouldn't hear to it. So, yeah. If we want to talk about the noise, noise ordinance, we can't give detail. Right. It just has to be short and sweet. Be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. So that's why we have to stay on the trail right now, you know, things like that. Yeah. That kind of message. So may, maybe just working on a, a simple updated campaign for the billboards yeah, in town. Come with a very short URL yeah. that talks about the noise ordinance. It's easy to remember. Oh, it's known. Something like that. Are they coming up? Or are they? Like a renew renewal or change or no, we're not sure about the renewal dates. Okay. I know the, the one are uh, the most expensive of the past. Uh, uh, so so they're not, they're not a hurry. Yeah, well the one um the poison spider one in the north end of town is about five hundred dollars a month. You know, the one at four hundred feet is about that. Yeah. Yep. Pretty far 
prices. You know, when we first put up the one on 400 East, it was extremely difficult to then that the UTD rental place put up a sign and they had lost a good portion of that one. Okay. I'm on the fence with that for the work. And I tried to tell the EO head about it. Okay, yeah, I was just asking that. We have it this time. Yeah. Well, it sounds like um, if you want to make a recommendation of next steps for the current billboards that we have, that would be a good place to start and just say, we should keep these ones, we should get rid of these ones. And, I think we should uh, change, at least change the pictures on them. You know, yeah. Because, yeah. You, you get kind of desensitize the picture. It just has to be visible. <laughs> That's the only problem with that one. Yeah. In the house upside down. <laughs> 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 my family didn't know this. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm just gonna fly to the rest of this. Um, the the data services contract to maintain the dashboard that they've already developed. Um, we've approved um, a sum amount of money, 30k, through the pre-authorization list. They sent us a, a proposal that we have to kind of vet and look at some alternatives and figure out if we're paying for the right amount for for what they're. Um, special event permitting. I'm doing interviews this week, or last week, excuse me, for the for Mary Luzold position, the administrative assistant. Um, so I have some good candidates and I'm following up on references this week, hopefully hiring that as soon as possible. That position that's been absent since November. Yeah, um, handle special event permitting right now, me and Mallory are kind of like, it's neither of our jobs, but we're kind of handling that for now. Um, for the short-term rental compliance software. So that's um, basically tracks all of the overnight accommodations um, that advertise via VRBO, Airbnb, all that kind of stuff. Um, it scrapes the websites, looks at listings, and the intention for us as a county is to compare TRT receipts to basically what did you advertise your rates and how many nights were you booked based on what the website said. Um, at some level, I think this kind of does, address, if we can solve this, that addresses some of the Title V concerns. Um, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, so which I did bring up during that internal conversation before that got listed was like, we, I think we, we could be able to do this without having businesses like actually report this themselves. Um, and that the, you know, our, our licensing and permitting process could pay for the software to do it. Um, and again, you know, the admin assistant would be the person that's monitoring those CRT receipts, looking at the, the software. Currently, I think we're going to change um, to more expensive but better software. Um, but we, we're going to coordinate with the clerk's office, planning and zoning attorney to like actually meet with those vendors, see the products that they have. I have my choice, obviously, but I can't just make that decision. Um, so that's those two things. And then, um, we're just gonna make sure there's nothing else on the admin person. We have money in, in the budget for a brochure reprint by the end of the year. Um, so that's kind of in the back of uh, Robert's mind to keep an eye on uh, inventory. And when we're starting to get low, if we feel like we need to do a reprint this year, um, that'll be kind of a second half of the year priority for Robert. Um, the leads program is still operating as usual. I, I'd love for us to get that awareness out a little bit more. Um, does everybody know what I'm speaking about when I say that? I do. You do? Now you do. I now I do. <laughs> so if you go to our website and you request a, tour, a visitor guide, you can select share my information with local businesses. So we get how many leads per week or month or? Well, from, from the website, um, probably. It can be 300, but they specify their interest. Yeah. Oh, good point. So no, for a specific, you know, for lodging. So incredibly cheap resource for local businesses to take advantage of that I don't think most people know about. Hi, Biga. Has everyone met Biga? Great. Hello, <laughs> Hello everyone. Hello. Hello. Sorry, do you need me for anything? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Come back to Wisco. Yeah, good.
thanks. Um, so anyway, I don't, I don't know exactly, maybe that's a chamber conversation or something like that, but I've been meaning to plug it every time I speak publicly and every time I forget. Don't plug it. Don't plug it. Don't plug it. Why, mm -hmm. because were you using it? Yeah, I use it. <laughs> <laughs> and then if everyone's getting the same email, it's not as useful. Maybe we need to increase the price. Uh, trade shows, Melissa is totally crushing that this year. So she's going to Reno next week for Go West. No. Yes. yes, for Go West and um, kind of leading all of our kind of travel work that Elaine used to do. Um, I'll probably go to like one or two big important things, but Melissa's mostly taking that on um, and we have budget to support that. Um, and these are the questions that really I think we could use some kind of chewing on and feedback with the last 10 minutes of our day. Um, so we, the, the, the event grant program that we've done for a long time um, a, how are we going to do it this year? Um, uh, getting that up and running, you know, internally, uh, you know, Mary Lou and Elaine basically ran that obviously Robert knows how it works historically, but, um, uh, building, we don't have like the institutional knowledge to like run that as is. So kind of at short term, we have that money allocated. I think like the folk fest and summer concert series, are anticipating that funding to run and I think continuing to support that is a good thing. But in the longer term, um, as we do kind of strategic planning, figuring out what is the role of a program like that. And if ultimately it's just to provide, you know, local community events like the summer concert series, let's just be clear about that and make it that that's what it is it's to support local community events, which helps people's morale during the busy tours, you know, something like that. Um, any, any, Kind of quick thoughts. Well, yeah, that. kind of going back historically, um, Robert, tell me if I'm wrong, you know, so is we did these grants to, is like seed money, you know, to get it going. And I think we used to have like a, um, like a five year, you can only get it for five years. Is that what it was or, yeah. or something? Mm -hmm. And then after five years, um, you weren't eligible for that grant anymore because it mm -hmm. was to get you off the ground, get your feet underneath you, become uh, financially efficient. The next so, part. so that we could um, then move on to other programs. Um, mm -hmm. What happened, and what's kind of happened is like, which I think is fine, is like the folk fest and the music festival, they um, they kept tweaking, um, tweaking the program so that they could qualify for it. You know, right. they're like, well, we're, we're offering this band camp, you know, for four, you know, and, which I think is good. Yeah. And, I, and I think it keeps these events fresh, you know, it keeps them adding new things or, or tweaking things a little bit. Oh, because they'd apply for a new component. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, interesting. So that they could qualify for it again, right. you know. And um, so I think that, like, a lot of that is good, you know, and I, and I, um, and I like the fact that it's, um, that it's seed money, you know, to get them off the ground. You know, I, I kind of, you know, I look at, like, the, the folk or the, the music festival and stuff like that. Hopefully we can quit funding that event by providing the stage. You know, it's like, hey, our contribution to this is this stage. You know, and um, and then that way we can take that money that would have normally gone to them at uh, twenty six thousand or whatever and just give it to another event. You know, so I I would kind of like to see um, new events coming in that we're kind of focusing on. Yeah. I know my understanding is that is that kind of five year that seed thing I didn't know about, but that it used to be a year long thing. Let's fill up the calendar with different stuff. And that now we have the busy season that's kind of full and then it became a shoulder season extension yeah, program, yeah. basically. And now those shoulder season programs are doing very successful. So to me, I think this is more of a conversation of, you know, do we keep expanding that? Do we do, do we need to play a role with this program? to continue to expand that shoulder season um, as a part of kind of larger planning conversations. Um, and then at, at I, you know, at, the, at what point do we, because we could continue to grow and grow and grow. At what point do people say, well, we actually don't want- We've grown too much. Or yeah, something like that. So just like, what, what really are the intended impacts of this program? And, and maybe it needs to be broken down into like um, local event grants, you know? Yeah. Like, Cause I think like part of TRT should be to benefit the locals, Absolutely. you know, it, it should be, there should be a piece of this pie that goes to the summer concert series. You yeah. know, it's just, it's a line item, you That's know? A, yeah. And, yeah, um, totally. but then you have like the folk festival that's bringing people in. How do we get them on their feet where they, they don't have to ask money? Right. You know, and, and then 
And maybe we look at it to go, okay, we have these events that are shoulder season, but maybe how do we get, maybe we get the folk festival to be seven days instead of three days, you know, so the people are coming, sure. staying longer. So we're, we're getting that person who's coming to, we're not getting 20 people to come to Moab for two days. We're getting 10 people to come to Moab for four days. Yeah. You know, and, and strive to find these events that have, that are bringing people for longer periods of time. Right. I, I totally something. agree. So in terms of memorializing that and thinking through that and having a kind of strategy for that kind of next year, um, I would imagine that kind of is a part of a planning exercise. I don't, I, I, cause I think right now for this year, it's kind of as is, is the way I'm thinking about it. And then maybe when it comes to talking about the budget recommendation, which I'm being asked to prepare for September, uh, which is, I guess, typically when we're supposed to do it, but every year it gets pushed back and it becomes chaos in November. So Chris is asking for an earlier request, but I don't know, is that the time to kind of revisit this and say, okay, for 2023, how are we going to do the plan? That's yeah, good yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, in the meantime, I think the way that we should probably do this to review any additional um, applications is maybe just like a subcommittee. So not taking up kind of time from the regular monthly meetings, which I think it has a lot in the past, having three people or, or some kind of assortment of this group that has a focused time period where we're reviewing applications and going through that and selecting it parallel to the regular meetings. Good. Yeah, the Mark Lee Clinic. Yeah, there you Remember go. That? I like your idea of seeing like the folk festival kind of extend, but can that come from us? Can we say, hey, can you extend it longer? Or does that have to be their idea? Well, maybe we just say, hey, we're changing this financing, you know, to do this and this, you know. Like for example, we we did a big study at our company and we found that like five percent of the people who come and do a trip at the Moab Venture Center do more than one trip, you know. And so we, we've kind of we're changing our marketing to kind of go instead of um, you know trying to get more people coming into a trip, just get those people that are here to do more trips. You yeah. know? And and so I think that with events, it could be that it could be that same thing. You know, how can we get people that are coming for these events to stay longer instead of trying to attract new people to, to come in? Yeah, and that's totally in line with the state's new tourism direction, the red and roll stuff. Uh -huh. um, you know, trying to get repeat visitation, trying to extend the length of stay, because that's actually more sustainable. It's less impact per dollar. It's, uh, or excuse me, more dollar per impact, I guess you could say. It's your changing sheets and hotel rooms less often than if you have yeah, one exactly. guest every other day. Um, and that's the kind of direction that I think if we can kind of get the county to sign on to, like if, if we are doing tourism promotion, it's gonna be this more quality visitation. And these are the metrics that we're trying to boost specifically rather than occupancy, trying to like number of nights quality. stayed. Um, yeah, and that's the, the state the direction's going. And I think that's a place that we can go that is you know, balanced with all of the all of the kind of various perspectives on what our department can and can't do. Um, uh, it is two until the hour. So I'm going to just really quickly mention these two things, food for thought. With the, the local business advertising grant, so this is 55 grand to support small kind of mom and pop tourism shops, maybe new businesses with some marketing dollars. Um, brought this up at the business summit yesterday. Had some really good feedback on this. Um, this would be another kind of to be designed and to be launched, but I think this is a great program. I think we should talk more about this and, and design it. Um, and then this kind of idea of doing um, kind of thinking about how Moab, Science Moab is doing a science certified program with guides and outfitters and, and using that as a starting point to figure out if we can't put together some kind of educational curriculum for local businesses that's best practices across the board um, without doing too much going too wide, you know. You, you, or you set up with us a two hour time for your kind of management staff and everybody you've got going on and kind of fits in your schedule to learn some the best. What do you, what do people, what do you tell people when they ask about biological soil crust? And this is what the OHV regulations are. It's that time to entry works or something like that. That's narrow and focused and effective. And as a result, you get a cool design sticker that goes on your window. That's your discover Moab certified or something like that. And then you get a priority listing on our website. 
so it's free. Everybody can do it. We're not unfairly treating anybody. And um, there's kind of a perk in which that, you know, if you're looking for our website that say, well, these folks are following the best practices of um, what our community thinks visitors should be known about. Um, so I'm really excited about that. But again, something that hasn't been scoped out. And then this kind of paid for by TRT thing. If we're doing event grants, it should be really clear that this event is getting paid for by TRT, especially if it's like the summer concert series. Like I should be going up there or we should be going up there and introducing that. Like we're, I think we're 50% of the funding for the summer concert series. So it's like, not, not that Cassie's like intentionally doing anything like that, but I think it's an opportunity to do local PR education and saying, you know, this is coming back to us. It's not just going to happen. Anyway, five o'clock. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, yo, yo, yo. You had two big days. Boy, yesterday. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm going to sleep for 20 hours, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think this. No. Did they call us adjourned or something? I forget. Adjourned. That was adjourned. Thanks, Daniel and Chanel. We always say we have a good thank day. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yeah. <laughs>